Welcome to the Board Wrap-Up Show. This is our monthly visit with the Superintendent of Punk City Public Schools, Shelly Errett. I'm your host, Sean Anderson. Thank you for watching. And uh, Shelly Errett, uh, this is the March Board Wrap-Up, and this school year is just moving quickly, isn't it? Can you believe it? The older you get, the faster it goes. I will tell you that. So, <laughs> right. hey, it doesn't seem like March when we're having some inclement weather today, but, you know, we've historically had inclement weather right up to spring break. So. Yeah, for sure. And as we as we uh, uh, tape this board wrap up show via Zoom, uh, it is inclement weather. And nice thing about it is a professional development day rather than a regular school day, right? It is, and I have to tell you, uh, we have ha we've got a live trainer here from Florida, Kagan Win Win Discipline. It is our first live training since before the pandemic, and we were so excited about it. And we we thought we might have to cancel and reschedule, but hey. Um, the storm wasn't as heavy as our meteorologist first predicted, so not as involved. Yeah, that was a great. good thing. I didn't have one bit of trouble coming in this morning. Yeah, not, not at all, not at all. And uh, a big uh, tip of the uh, microphone, so to speak, to uh, those out there clearing the parking lots of different uh, sites in our district because they were out there 5 a.m. hour clearing that teacher's parking lot at the high school. I drove right by and Yes, yeah. all of our parking lots are clear. We, we contract with a couple of groups to clear our lots and they have just been very accommodating. And one of the concerns was, uh, you know, it quit snowing about 615. We clear the lots and it continues to snow. What we did today is we delayed our professional development day to start at nine rather than eight. And, and hey, things just work out. But I promise you, you can't make that call right. Yeah, right. <laughs> it worked That's out true. well today. Yeah, for sure. Superintendent Shelly Eric gives us an update on the uh, Board of Education meeting every month, and the March Board of Education meeting started out, as they always do, with the Board of Education Awards, and can you tell us how did those go? Right, sure. We have a certified employee of the month, and that was Ms. Molly Carter. She is our Spanish teacher at Poe High. She's also our student council sponsor, so uh, one of them. So she was honored at the board meeting. Then our support employee of the month was Ms. Nicole McKee. We call her Nikki. Nikki McKee. She is a child nutrition personnel employee over at East Middle School and the kids love Nikki. She's always singing and dancing and having fun and you, you know our child nutrition people. Well all of our people are heroes but uh, we've got some really great employees. Then our friend of education was a volunteer at Trout Elementary and that was Miss Lisa Simmons. So oh, she's worked really hard over at Trout. Well, uh, reports, uh, there were a lot of things to talk about in this part of the March Board of Education uh, meeting, a legislative update, uh, State Bill 1647, um, that is one of the hot topics. Can you that tell? That was the hot topic, and we discussed all bills that have come through committee at the legislature, but the big one right now is 1647, and that's the Oklahoma Empowerment Act. And as originally written, the OEA accounts would provide a educational spending fund for potential private school and homeschool students to utilize for specific costs, education costs, such as tuition, transportation, buying right. a Chromebook, that kind of thing. Um, an estimated average of each account would be $5,800, which would come out of the state funding for public schools pot. So um, I love our private schools here in town, and I, I am glad that people have a choice, but uh, public dollars are for public services, and um, it would really hurt the rural schools because it, it doesn't just take out of Ponca City Public Schools what goes to our private schools. It, it's factored into the state, and there are a lot of private schools all the way through high school in the metropolitan areas and some, some rural schools that have no private schools. So they would be actually funding, helping fund uh, private schools and homeschool children 
um, and, and they would lose services. So an estimated cost with just the current private school students would be $174 million taken from the formula. And now that bill was rewritten. The title was stricken. That means that uh, legislatures can make modifications to it. Um, it was amended to uh, exclude homeschool students, just private school students, which would have made the cost 235 million if there are no other um, had enrolled in homeschool or private schools. And um, then there was a cap on eligibility of 154,000 for a family of four, uh, which is incomes up to 300% of our free and reduced lunch rates. Um, now, Adam and I were actually at the Senate Appropriations Committee meeting when it passed and it was supposed to go through that morning um, and they were busy amending the bill and it, it got uh, pretty tight. In fact, Senator Treat got a vote because he's Senate pro temp and then Senator McCourtney, who's the floor leader, came in right before the vote and voted yes. So the, the final vote was 12 to eight. So there are two votes wouldn't have mattered. It would have been 10-8. So it was going to the Senate floor. It was on the agenda. Senator Coleman had told me that it was on the agenda, last on the agenda yesterday on Thursday, March the 10th, and it didn't get heard. They adjourned before the vote. Now, our legislators are working Monday and Tuesday of spring break. Typically, Typically they took, take off spring break, but they suspended session at the Capitol due to inclement weather back in late February. So they're making up those days. And here's the important thing. Um, bills have to be heard in their house of origin by March 24th. So that has to be heard uh, by that time. And you may have known there was a poll, the Terrence poll. It's a it's a polling group that has actually done some polling for Senator Langford, had done a poll and overwhelmingly more than 80% of Oklahomans support increased public school funding to raise the pay of teachers, to raise the pay of support em employees, hire more teachers. You know, we have a severe teacher shortage in the state of Oklahoma. The pay is pretty low. We're 47th, Sean, in public education in Oklahoma. If this bill passes, we will be in the top 10 for privately schools funded in the nation. So top 10 in, in private, but yet public are still at 47. 47. Uh-huh. So it should be heard either Monday or Tuesday, or it could be heard the following week on through the 24th. So rumor has it that uh, they're bringing in uh, Lieutenant Governor Matt Pinnell for a vote. I, I think it's gotten even tighter. Um, the Terrence poll made a huge impact. And if you think 80%, okay, it's all the rural people, but when they combined all the demographics, it's still 61%, no matter the party affiliation, no matter the sector of the state, suburban, rural, urban. So overwhelmingly the public wants to keep private schools funded. And I'm concerned about the future actually of, of public schools should this pass. Um, public services, tax dollars are for public services, ambulance, roads and bridges, public schools. And we need to be able to support our public schools. To be yeah. a top 10 state, we have to have a top 10 education system and we're 47th in funding that that won't happen until we're in the top 10 in funding yeah well as the father of a teacher here in our state i'm uh, i'm with you 100 percent, and um, i certainly hope well i have to say our people have been making lots of calls uh senator coleman's gotten a lot of traffic uh lots of people have called um Senator or Lieutenant Governor Matt Pinnell's office 
here's what the legislators are saying. They want to hear, they don't want to hear from educators anymore. This is a bill for parents. They want to hear from parents. So we, each school developed an action plan, which parents to target, you know, how they're going to target it, you know, through PTAs, through their Facebook pages. But a lot of parents have made a lot of calls too. So I, I appreciate our, our supporters on that. And again, I love our private schools, St. Mary's, Lutheran. They become wildcats, so they are ours. But it, it's just how the money is funded through the state. Um, hey, I heard a, an interesting perspective. Actually, a friend of mine has a daughter with a child that's in a private school in a metro area. And the private school mom is against it. They, they pay money for their kids to be in smaller class sizes. So she even made a call, you know. Um, private schools can only hold so many kids, which would then possibly open a whole new market, new private schools coming up. So that is, that is a really, um, that is a really good point. Um, uh, you know, a lot of the, um, the uh, attractiveness of a private school for some families, it might lose some of that if, if this uh, uh, passes and then certainly hope it does and, and private schools do not have to have the accountability that public schools do. Their teachers don't have to be certified. Uh, every penny we spend is audited as it should be for public dollars. Uh, these are public dollars. They should be audited. Uh, we have standards that we have to teach and maintain and our accreditation report and our federal funds. It's, you know, there would be no accountability and, right. and public funds should be audited. Schools, right. Um, well, it's become a staple of our board wrap ups for the last two years, and that is a COVID update. And uh, the good news is that the COVID update is not so bad. It's no. good. Hey, I'm hoping this doesn't become a staple. I'm ready for it to go away. Right. So, right. Uh, right. Okay. So the CDC has changed their guidelines just because of low transmission. And they have created a risk level called the U.S. Community Risk Level by county. It's updated every Thursday on the CDC. You know, we've talked about the risk level in our state, which had a number, how many new cases per 100,000 cap capita. This is based on a county, a county's hospitalizations, new cases, and their hos hospital capacity. So the low risk no mask are recommended, uh, mask are welcome. Medium risk uh, is color-coded yellow, mask are rep is, uh, recommended for immunocompromised or those who could become severely ill if they contracted COVID. And then high risk, uh, a mask is recommended. Well, the first time it came out, K County was in the high risk. And you know, our board approved last time by sight, if there were three, percent or less affected mask were optional. Um, so this came out. Well, the first week we we're at high risk. The last two weeks we've been at low risk. So I, last week when I would go to sites, I'm like, where's my mask? And I'm like, yay, I don't have to have it. So um, it's been really good. But something else that was just fabulous for us is with the CDC's changing guidelines, they changed their order on masking on conveyances, which include public and private school buses or vehicles. And you know, we required buses on that, uh, mask on our buses because that's a federal order. Um, that's been lifted. So as of February 25th, our students don't have to wear a, a, mask, a mask on the, on the bus, bus, just regular, regular travel, travel or going, going to an event. So. I'm hoping it just, this is the beginning of the end. Now, you can't predict COVID just kind of like you can't predict the weather. So um, our board voted 3% at site. Should we get in the high risk? And sure. and sure. we're not even close. Haven't, Haven't been, been for weeks. It's wonderful. 
So changes were discussed about the return to learn plan uh, because of all of this and uh, what changes were decided on? Well, that's that's what changed. We are following the U.S. community risk level and no, no masking on buses. And a board has to approve the return to learn plan. So every time there's a change, uh, it has to go through a board meeting. Yeah, well, there you go. Um, part of the Board of Education meeting is approving contracts. And when yes. they're below 10,000, when they're below 10,000, it's just kind of a, a routine type thing. Well, below 10,000 doesn't have to be an agenda item. It can go on a consent agenda. Above 10,000 has to be a separate agenda item. So I'm going to share some contracts above 10,000 of interest. We have an agreement with 360 turf and outdoor equipment for the purchase of a district mower for our maintenance to use at the baseball stadium and surrounding areas. Sean, I hate to tell you what that old mower was like at the baseball field. It had to be jump started every single time you started it. So it was in definite need. It was probably 20 years old, definite need of replacement. So everybody's excited about that. Oh, here's a good one. We have an agreement with Anderson Flooring to install flooring at the registration center. And the registration center is the old board office, 111 West Grand, and the carpet is really old. It just needs a refresh. When people come to Ponca City to register, you know, that's the first thing they see. And uh, we're going to have an update there, maybe do something with the reception desk. So excited oh. about that. <laughs> Okay, so it's hard to believe, but it's snowing, but it's time for lawn care services. And we contract with lawn care services to take care of our hundreds of thousands of square feet of lawn, probably more than that. I mean, it, we just don't have the employees to keep up with it, nor the equipment. So we have an agreement with Heinemann Enterprises and Lund's Lawn Service for lawn care. And that will start right after spring break and go through the fall. And it's agreement for mowing every seven days. And of course, if it's rain or we don't need mowing, then that will change. So right. Right. Sure. Um, our municipal accounting software, which helps with our audit has to be updated every year. So we updated that uh, cost or our board did. Here's the really, really good one. Uh, we had a quote from Vance Chevrolet Buick for two new Suburbans. You know, our golf team, our tennis team, our teachers going to professional development, right. a lot of times they'll take a Suburban. And that helps with our teams with not a lot on it because we don't have a, to have a bus driver with a CDL license. Our Suburbans, oh, they're no telling how old they were. Somehow Adam Leeming found two of these on a state contract and you know how much suburbans are so we got two new suburbans um and those have been delivered and casey out at legacy signs is going to put this cool wildcat wrap on oh, the back it's not going to be covered all the way around they're beautiful white suburbans but just kind of like on the rear that wraps wraps around they're they're going to be beautiful they are beautiful without the wraps but hey you're going to know the wildcats are coming yeah for sure that's wonderful well uh board personnel report um and uh the support personnel some great news for them right oh my goodness it this is amazing news been doing a little research on our support personnel's pay and and did some research with Stillwater, Enid, Bartlesville, Ponca City. And of the four, Stillwater's the highest paid, then Enid, then Ponca City, and then Bartlesville. Now, here, here's, here's a tricky thing that people don't understand. If you come to work for us, you get your insurance paid. There are benefits and people like the calendar. Uh, if you're a 10 month employee, you work when kids go to school. And what we do is we spread that pay for 10 months through 12 months and it, it makes for a low check. And it was embarrassing to say what we started. I think it was 875. It is not a livable wage. And um, our board approved 
a significant increase across the board for our 10 months and our 12 months, a little more for our 10 months, but for our 12 months, they reduced the work contract from 250 days to 240 days because to be even more commensurate with other schools. Uh, but it's going to be like a $1,500 to a $1,700 raise. And our starting pay went from $875 to $1,135 at the lowest level. And then just up across. So $1,500 to $1,700 for every support employee. And we're going to actually do a career fair this summer for our support employees. I think at this 10 seconds, we're down nine custodians, wow. eight CMP workers, sped paras, teacher assistants. It's, it's just a struggle. Uh, they can go to work somewhere else and, and make $12 an hour without benefits. But bottom line is they have to pay the bills. They have to have, pay their housing and be able to eat. So we're super excited about this and hopefully we can get some employees in. This will start in the next fiscal year, uh, July 1, 2022. So great news. Very good. Well, that was a, uh, a rather a, a busy, a busy uh, Board of Education meeting for March and the board wrap up show is our monthly visit with Superintendent Shelly Eric. And as we tape this, it is the Friday before spring break. And uh, Shelly Eric, we know that uh, uh, you don't get a lot of time off. I'm hoping you do have maybe some plan for spring break or no? I am going to see my mom and dad in Eastern Oklahoma. I don't get to see them very much. It's super busy and, and hey, you need to take every chance you get. Life's short, so. Yeah, for sure. All right, Shelly, thank you for, for doing the board wrap-up. Hey, thank you for having me. That's going to do it for this edition of the board wrap-up. For Ponca City Public Schools, I'm your host, Sean Anderson. Until next time, thanks for watching. And Wildcats, hold that line. Go Cats.